Hi guys, I created this video to provide some more info around the PoE options on the Cisco 800 series. First, I'm going to show you the upgrade kits and highlight the differences. Afterwards, I'll show you how you can figure out which kit applies to your router. As a last step, I'll show you how to install these kits. This is the first PoE kit used by the older Cisco 880 series. It has a small daughter card, three elevated screws, three screws, and an 80 watts power supply. You will need this power supply in addition to the standard 60 watts power supply. This kit is used by the newer C880 series. It also comes with a daughter card, three elevated and five normal screws, a small jumper cable and a 60 watt power supply. The power supply will replace your default 30 watt power supply. The reason why this daughter card is so big is because the transformation from 12 volts to 48 volts happens on the daughter card. Therefore, this card has to also hold a small transformer. This kit is used by the Cisco 890 series. Similar to the first kit, it has a small daughter card, as the transformation happens in the external power supply. The old models use a secondary 80 watts power supply. The newer models combine both power supplies into one very big 125 watt power supply. The most difficult part is to figure out which PoE kit applies to your router. You can search on cisco.com to figure out which one you need. Next, I'll show you a simple trick that will make it very easy for you to choose the correct one. The 800 IL PM2 is used by the older Cisco 880 series. You can see it has two power connectors at the back and you have to connect both PSUs to operate the router and power the PoE ports. The 800 G2 PoE2 has only one connector which is rated at 12 volts and 2.5 to 5 amperes. You will need a 2.5 ampere, that means 30 watts power supply, to operate just the router, and you need a 5 ampere, meaning 60 watts power supply, to operate the router and PoE ports on it. There's also a small label saying PoE option requires 5A power, power adapter. The 800 ILPM4 is used by all Cisco 890 series. You need to select the 80 watts power supply option if you have a secondary plug for 48 volt, similar to the first model. If you have one of the new models, you will see a 4-pin connector. This 4-pin connector requires a 125W power supply to power the router and the attached PoE devices. As the first step, we have to open the chassis. For this, we need a Phillips screwdriver and we need to make sure we are electrostatically grounded so that we don't break the router accidentally. All 800 series ISRs open the same way, therefore I'll just show it to you on one model. The cover is secured with 3 to 5 screws. One at the back and one or two on each side. Once all screws are removed, we can easily flip the cover up. Just from the back here. Please make sure you don't disconnect the wires between the cover and the router. These are connected to the walls and to the front cover. Next, we are going to install the PoE daughter card. This upgrade kit contains the daughter card, three screws, as well as three elevated screws. Of these three, they possibly are two slimmer and one slightly wider. If your elevated screws have the same size, it obviously doesn't matter which one goes where. If you have two slim and one bigger one, by default, the bigger one goes into the bottom left corner. You will also see that the motherboard is marked differently here. First, install the three elevated screws. Hand tight is good enough. Next, install the daughter card. Make sure the connector aligns with the socket on the motherboard. The screw holes should align automatically. 
Last, we have to screw in the three screws. Now the daughter cut is installed properly and we are done. Next, we are going to install the POE daughter cut. The upgrade kit contains the daughter cut, five screws, three elevated screws and a little jumper cable. First, remove the three screws that are pre-installed in the holes for our elevated screws. After that, install the three elevated screws. Hand tight is good enough. Now, install the daughter card. Make sure the connector at the bottom aligns with the socket on the motherboard. The screw hole should align automatically. Last, we now have to screw in the screws. On this model, we have five screws to screw in. Normally, it's not a good thing to have parts left over, but in our case, it's okay if we have a few screws spare. But don't forget to install the jumper cable. On this model, the transformation happens on the daughter card. Do not overload the connector Cisco designs this model to use this little jumper cable. Just clip one end on the motherboard. You will see there's two connectors, but just one of them will fit. You cannot mix up the way around it, so please don't use force. It will just clip in the right way easily. The other end has to clip into the daughter card itself. And we're done! As the last step, we have to close the cover. Make sure the ledges of the cover are in the holes of the base. You just have to put the base gently onto the ledges to achieve this. You can see there are about four ledges in the cover here. Now push down the cover. In case you have an integrated wireless model, be careful with the antenna connectors. Now we just have to screw in the screws and we are done.